less than a month after Election Day, when several pro-labor candidates came out on top, we are seeing tens of thousands of workers across the country feeling perhaps more emboldened than ever. But none more evident than just this past week's showdown between Walmart and some of its workers who, for their part, are not even members of a union. They are backed by an outside group when they walked off the job on Black Friday. But they're not the only ones standing up to management. So what is really behind this sudden spike in labor activity? And is it here to stay? Joining me now, radio talk show host Mary Walter and Garland Nixon. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, I'll start with you. What do you think is behind this rise in, in number of protests we're seeing? I think the unions behind the rise in the number of protests we're seeing, those weren't Walmart workers for the most part on the picket line. Those were paid members of the UFCW who were out there protesting. Walmart has voted more than once on to whether, as to whether to unionize or not, and they've been voted down more than once. They don't want to unionize. So this is nothing about what's in the workers' best interest. This is about what's in big unions' best interest, and they're, it's all about the money and getting more people paying dues. That's what this is you know, about. The, the number of union-related work stoppages involving more than 1,000 workers, it has reached, it reached an all-time low of just five in 2009. Then it rose to 13 this year. That was as of October. And as we see following the election, it's risen to even more. So Garland, I would ask you, are unions overconfident at this point? I don't think they're overconfident, and I think this is actually what, what we're looking at is we're looking at income inequality coming to a head. Look at Walmart as an example. Here's a company that made $16 billion in 2011, $16 billion with a B, yet their average employee makes $8.81. So their employees are on food stamps. I think we're blaming the unions when the fact of the matter is the employees are the ones that are getting tired of it. If you look at Sutter Health or Suter Health, Suter Health made $4.2 billion over the last seven years and they want to cut benefits why should the employees give up benefits to a company that's averaged 500 million dollars in profits a year so I think people are tired of it and they're just fighting back and I don't think it's all that much related to the election Mary well, well here's the thing we I talked about this on, on radio on Friday and I spoke to a guy who's a union guy and I said to him here's the deal if unions are so fantastic and unions have so much to offer why isn't joining a union voluntary so they could come in and say if you'd like to join you can but you don't have